Okay, uh, and finally vitamin B12. What's a vitamin B12? It's a complex, beautiful molecule that's absolutely essential for your brain and your spinal cord and your blood. This is a molecule of vitamin B12. It's a beautiful molecule. Um, it's got this lovely four-circled lattice here and kind of a tail of, uh, of molecules coming off here. I'll sh the tail is very important. Now, people who say, well, that's why I need my red meat, man. Get my B12 that way. You got a lot of B12 in beef, a lot of B12 in chicken. Got to, that's why you need meat, B12. No animal makes vitamin B12. Cows don't make B12. Chickens don't make it. Pigs don't make it. No animal makes vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 is made by bacteria that live in the soil. Animals have B12 in their flesh because they're eating grass all day. Cows and sheep and cattle and deer and buffalo and antelope and geese, actually, um, are grazing animals. And they live on the grass they pull up from the ground. And on the roots of the grass they're eating, there are particles of soil. And in these soil particles are these B12-producing microbes. The animal swallows them, the microbes in their gut produces B12, it's absorbed into their muscles. Yes, you can kill the cow or the pig and strip the flesh off its bones and eat it and get B12 that way. But it was bacterial B12 all along, the animal didn't make it. Okay, It, it was always uh, plant-derived. So what? Well. You can also find B12 in the stream water. The, uh, the uh, animals, both they poop in the stream and, and the waters, uh, every rainstorm washes off the fields and washes B12 into the, into the streams. So every time this female elk drinks, she's gonna get some B12. Well, guess who else gets their B12 from the natural world that way? We do. When we were living Earth-connected lives, that same vitamin B12 was flowing through our guts as well. Um, and because we spent all day foraging, you know, that whole paleo mythos that you know, every caveman had a mastodon in the freezer and spent all day eating mammoth meat. I'm a caveman. Huh? It's a myth. Most hunts were unsuccessful. Most times the guys came back empty handed. They did drag a carcass back into camp. It rotted within a day or two. You couldn't eat the stuff. And they, we'd never get through the winter like that. The reality is, that most of the calories that were brought into the Paleolithic camp were gathered by the women who spent all day pulling up roots and tubers and starchy corms and drying them and cooking them. And this is where the majority of the calories came from that kept our Paleolithic ancestors alive, not from mammoth meat. Uh, <clears throat> And that, by the way, is why we have the mouth and teeth that we have. We have a small mouth with flat grinding molar teeth because we lived on starches. That's a natural food for us. People say, what about these big canines? Why are we giving, if we're not supposed to eat meat, how about our canines? You want to see some, I invite you to go into the bathroom, open, stand in front of the mirror, open your mouth, and have a look. If your mouth, your teeth look like that, then by all means, uh, go to the nearest butcher shop, buy a piece of steak, go outside and rip off the paper and ah, I don't have at it, man, don't bother to cook it. Um, but you can see these teeth are not going to work for starchy uh, vegetables. That is not what we have. These are little canines, are meant for biting into apples and, and root and starchy vegetables. <clears throat> this is what our grinding teeth are really for. So, vitamin B12, you need it. Don't ignore it. If you're not eating animal flesh, then where are you going to get your B12? Not that the animals make it, but where are you going to get it? Mm -hmm. Along comes modern sanitation. Nobody's drinking out of streams anymore. Nobody's eating unwashed vegetables anymore. And for, due to modern sanitation, which is okay with me, I don't want to treat cases of cholera and typhoid fever, it's okay to put chlorine in the water supply, but meanwhile, it's there to kill bacteria and it kills the B12-producing organism. And because of modern sanitation, the classic natural B12 sources have dropped out of our lives. And it's for that reason that today's vegan has to use supplemental vitamin B12. It's not because the diet is naturally lacking, so therefore it can't be the proper diet for us. When we were living Earth-connected lives, nobody took vitamin B12 supplements. 
but it's modern life. No one wants to drink out of streams, and that's why you need to get a supplement. Um, I believe methylcobalamin is the most absorbable form. 500 micrograms, 1,000 micrograms under your tongue twice a week, three times a week should meet everybody's needs. You, know, you want to take it every day, uh, you can. Um, I want to point out uh, something important about blue-green algae and spirulina. This is a uh, uh, this is the vitamin B12 molecule. It's again got that lovely, nice long tail here. But a lot of, of primitive plants make similar molecules, uh, but they're not really B12. Here's a B12-like analog, um, but the problem is. Um, uh, this nitrogen-containing ring down here has been broken open down here. Uh, this OH group is now a single-bonded oxygen. If I can, I'm at a bad angle here. It's not the same molecule. It's close, but it's not the same molecule, and it doesn't work. It'll occupy the receptor site for real B12, but it doesn't turn the lock. It doesn't do what B12 is supposed to do. It's a B12 analog. It's pseudo-vitamin B12. You should know that. Some sea vegetables make this. Um, but spirulina and blue-green algae are really good at making B12 analogs. And there are some disturbing studies here where they uh, look for uh, pseudo-B12 in, uh, uh, which one is this one? This is uh, spirulina tablets. Um, and it turns out that most of them um, were uh, analogs identified as pseudo-B12. So I'm not a big fan of spirulina tablets if you're trying to uh, keep your B12 levels normal. Uh, and the same thing with blue-green algae. Uh, they found the same thing. The purified coronoid uh, was identified pseudo-vitamin B12. And so they suggest that uh, blue-green algae is not suitable uh, for B12, especially in vegans. So uh, uh, get it out of the real, um, get it out of a uh, supplement that's specifically made for human absorption. Again, this is in my thriving on a plant-based diet. I guess it's also in this video. So what do I do? Um, I take a multivitamin. Uh, now, as I mentioned yesterday, uh, we all have been burned on the multivitamin issue uh, because uh, uh, they, these high potency vitamins come in and they start building up in your tissues and you can't get rid of 50,000 units of vitamin A, you can't get rid of 30,000 units of beta carotene, you can't get rid of 5 milligrams of folic acid, and they start building up in your tissues and doing things like vitamin A causes hip fractures, and vitamin, uh, beta carotene increases lung cancer growth, folic acid gives breast lumps and prostate cancers. Um, so we all backed off of, of high potency multivitamins. So uh, what do we do? Because you still need some B12, and you need some, uh, uh, some uh, vitamin K2, some uh, vitamin D, etc. cetera. Um, along comes my friend, Dr. Joel Furman. Uh, and he, this is the label off of his uh, men's daily uh, and, he, and his women's daily. Um, I have no financial connection with Dr. Furman's vitamin sales. But when I looked at his label, I said, mm, I should have thought of that. He, what, a, what a great formulation, because what did he do? Well, first of all, he took out the vitamin A, took out the beta carotene, took out the folic acid, he took out all the baddies. Uh, he took the other ones and toned them way down, vitamin C only down to 100 milligrams. Uh, but he did leave in a good belt of vitamin D, 2,000 of vitamin D, so you don't have to take a separate vitamin D. He gives a little vitamin K uh, for, to make sure calcium goes to your bones instead of your artery walls. Here he covers your B12 with 200 micrograms of B12 every day, so you don't have to take a separate B12. Um, he toned down the calcium down to 200 instead of 1,000 milligrams, but, but, but with the almost 1,000 milligrams in our food that we saw, plus this 200, look at that, we're up at that 1,200 that the USDA is recommending. Here's 150 micrograms of iodine from seaweed, so that covers your thyroid issue. Uh, I made a little bit of magnesium, but just 100, very modest. Um, and you've got a little bit of zinc, 15, which is, uh, can be challenging for vegans to get if you're not eating lots of root vegetables. And then he throws in uh, uh, some uh, various uh, mushrooms, vitamins, etc. It's a really well thought out vitamin. And so, um, so I take a couple of his every morning and, and, uh, and done. And so I don't have to take separate B12, separate D, separate zinc, so I don't have to do that. So um, uh, you can buy his vitamins off Amazon. I should get a commission. I sell more of his vitamins than he does. 
Um, you can get them through my website if you want, if you go to the resources section.